ارباباً من دون اللہ and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ but if they turn back فَقُلُوا شَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ tell them that we at least are Muslims we have submitted our will to the will of God we have submitted our will to the will of God this is the example he set us. Immediately he set in motion a process of delivering the message to all. The whole known world around him. Messages were sent out in his lifetime. This is the example. You look at the life of Jesus. In his lifetime he never preached to a single known Jew. He never converted a single known Jew. Among the twelve disciples of his, not one was a known Jew. The disciples of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salman Farsi, the Persian was there. Bilal the Abyssinian was there, besides the Quraysh. This is the life example. His territory is the world. Kafat al The whole of mankind. But the bulk of mankind still do not know. That was then, 1,400 years ago. Is it any different now? We are 1,000 million today, yes. But the bulk of mankind, have they received that message yet? I ask you. There are more worshippers of men and monkeys, elephants and snakes on God's good earth today than the worshippers of the one true God. Do you know that? There are more mankind today worshipping men and monkeys, women, elephants, cows and what and what not, and humankind and worshipping the devil. They have a Satan worshipping cult, worshipping shaitan. They go out of the way and say, we worship shaitan, the devil. They worship Sun Myung Moon, the Korean, in America. They're worshipping him as a god. Guru Maharaj Ji, they're worshipping as a god. Swami Prabhupada of the Hare Krishna movement, they're worshipping as a god. Sai Baba, they're worshipping as a god. Today, after 1,400 years of Islam, the situation is no better. It's a shame on us. Wallah, it's a shame. Absolute disgrace. 1,400 years Allah is crying there. Say, Walakin aksaran nasi la alamun. We are uttering the word, Walakin aksaran nasi la alamun. But the bulk of men can still don't know. But the bulk of men can still don't know. What are we doing to rectify the situation? Nothing. We sit tight on our backside. Satisfied. We go and make salat on Fridays and inshallah we'll go to Jannah. Inshallah we'll go to Jannah. But Jannah is not that cheap. We have made it very cheap. The examples of the prophets. They sacrificed their all. You know at the Hajjatul Vida, the fervent pilgrimage, there were about 110,000, 110,000 Ashabas at the Hajjatul Vida, the last Hajj that our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he performed. During the course of that sermon of his, he's telling them, he says, this message that I have given you, he said, have you received the message? And they all exclaim with one accord, most certainly thou hast. So he lifts up his eyes towards heaven. He says, Ya Bari Thala, O my Lord, be a witness that I have delivered my message. And now you that are present here, deliver it to those who are absent. And out of the 110,000 Asabas that were there, not even 10,000 are buried in Arabia. What, were they taken up away into heaven in a flying saucer? No. They spread out throughout the world. They understood the message. That this was not for home consumption only for themselves. This was not an Arab religion. This is the religion of God for mankind. And they spread out. And they, send, they traveled as far as Indonesia, Malaysia. And they converted our people. They came to part, my part of India. They converted my people. They came as far as Nigeria. They converted the people. They came as far as Mozambique. And they converted the people. They did the job. We now comfortably set. Alhamdulillah, we have done well. But this primary duty of the Muslim, we are not making any exertion to share this deen. And our survival, our salvation here and in the hereafter lies in this, that we share this deen. For survival, we have to share. It is the best insurance policy that we can ever take out is to propagate the faith, change the environment. Otherwise, the environment is going to change us, and it is changing us. They are forcing pig down our throat, wherever, any excuse. Pig, pig, you go into the airways, the pig is there right in front of you. Our forefathers, they held on to certain small principles. 
and the reward that Allah gave us. Just little things. Meat. Just to know we want halal meat. Halal meat. Just, and, and we are a handful of people. We are less than 2% of the whole South African population. Less than 2%. And when we started, we were abject, in abject poverty. Our, our forefathers here were as slaves to the white man. My people, we are also living on the smell of an oil rag, as the white man was describing, on starvation level. In 1927, when I came from India, at the age of nine, we were living on a starvation level. As the white man sarcastically said, the Indian is living on the smell of an oil rag. It's only the smell that's keeping him alive, in starvation. And we were starving. Now, Allah has blessed us. From that to this, where we have reached, shouldn't we open our mouths? Allah has given us a deen, a way of life, which you don't have to be ashamed of anything. There is not another nation or a community that can teach you anything. There is no religious group on earth that can teach you anything in hygiene. We are the most hygienic people. We are the most hospitable people. In brotherhood, in piety, in charity, in sobriety, there is not another nation that can show a candle to us. And yet we don't get converts. The Christian with all his arrogance, he's getting converts. He's getting converts. We don't get converts. I want to know why. Is Islam a spent force? Is the Quran now to be put in a museum, a museum piece? Is that what you think? No. The reason is very simple. We don't open our mouths. That's all. You must op learn to open your mouth. Talk, man, talk. Can't you say something about Islam? Don't you know one thing about Islam? That's all. One thing. Can't you talk about one thing, about your hygiene? Why don't you tell him about your hygiene? How hygienic we are, the amount of water that we use. Number one, we wash. You know, you go for number one, we wash. Number two, we wash. Any excuse, water, water, water. We, are, we use more water than any other people on earth. Use, not abuse. Why don't you speak about it? Tell them. You know, I was supposed to have one of my new brothers in faith, an Englishman, Mr. James Cunningham. He is now Jamaluddin Cunningham. He was bringing these books to give to any of a city hall meeting, 3,000. Uh, it was quite a heavy load in the car. He reached as far as Naishna, and somehow the car skidded, and uh, it's a total wreck. This morning he left back for home, and the books are coming by some private company. Cross, was it? Cape, hmm? Cape Cross Express, something like that. Cross Cape Express. This young man, Englishman, his father and mother are Roman Catholics. And he's got a can in the toilet. Look, you know, beautiful things you can learn from innocent, like little children. He has a can in the toilet. The parents didn't like his conversion. He said, you can be anything. If you don't believe in God, it's all right. You become Hare Krishna, it's all right. But Muslim is a red rag to the bull. Because now he's going to say, drinking is bad, daddy. Gambling is wrong, daddy. See, everywhere. So dancing is dead, baby, daddy. So everywhere now this Muslim, his son is a Muslim, is going to come in the way. So he hates this young fellow. But somehow things are cooling off. But now, always, what are you doing with that can in the toilet, James? So he explained it. Again, he says, James, what are you doing with that can in the toilet? So he says, Daddy, look. He says, you know, you, to wash that pan, with hard pick and whatnot, 20 liters down the drain to wash the pan, but not one drop for yourself. On yourself, not one drop. <laughs> Look, it's a pen. He said, not one drop you use for yourself. For the pan, what would you do? Huh? That brush and that hard pick and what and what not, you know, killing all the germs, yes. But you carry it on yourself. I said, Daddy, not one drop for yourself. So the old man goes and tells his wife, he says, you know, James has got a point there, but I won't admit it. <laughs> this is man. This is man. I said, look, isn't there anything you can talk about? Nothing. Our Nabi Karim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us the secret of knowledge. He said, Balligo anni wa kana aya. Deliver the message regarding me, even if it is one verse, one fact, give it. One fact, give it. Talk about it. One thing about this, what I told you now. I said, look, you know, this Englishman, he's converted.